Hey guys, it's Phase One once again. Today we are gonna cover Inside Star Citizen: Flight of the Talon, and I made sure I, I didn't watch it, so you're gonna get my initial impressions on this uh, episode of Inside Star Citizen. Right? If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And if there's anything in this video that you like, make sure to leave a like as well. If you dislike, dislike as well. All right, so let's get straight into it. Chris was talking with Paul and was like, let's Whoa. just go full bird with this. And that looks really cool. Favorite thing about ships is, you know, when you're in combat, you know, this, this ships are like fire. Oh man, I like it. Blowing stuff I up. like but it. For me, oh. when you walk out on, on your landing pads and you see the ship, you want that to be it looks really good. the player. Okay. And that's why we pursued it. The Talon and Talon Shrike are a pair of fighters by Isperia. They're light fighters, so they prize agility, over raw firepower and durability. The difference between the two is the Talon doesn't have great missiles, but has great guns. The Talon Shrike has great missiles, but not great guns. So you have your two okay. choices there, depending on how you want to play. Ooh. Man, I love the cockpit. Look at that. Look at his view. Man, that is so cool. I love the, the design language of for, for the Aspera. Uh, the Talon and um, what's the other one? The, the dropship you guys know which one i'm talking about but man i really love it man i love i love these these little um i don't know if it's struts i don't know what it is but it just looks it looks these things that i'm talking about here it just look it look it goes it, it fits it fits the kind of ship that it is i really like the design the talent itself it is a very elegant design i remember talking to paul at the very start the concept can look super lightweight, but whether or not we can deliver that, you know, so many of our ships, once we get them, have that issue of, um, oh, we didn't take into account that it, it needs a size two power plant or it needs three size one shield generators or, or whatever it might be. With the Talon, we didn't Ooh. get any extra weight added. I like that. I like that. That was cool. Onto it, and that it was, was cool. As sleek and as, as elegant as what we wanted. It feels fast when you see it. Like, it, it doesn't have to be moving, but it just looks fast it looks agile it does it does i love the animation on the ship when it's in landed mode the, the wings kind of fold in and the shoulders okay. hunch back and you get these underlying feathers that open and close that is sick which okay major in i really like the landing gear as, as strange as that sounds um, i think it's got that hawk look, look to it Ooh. i think the way the player enters the ship and go, you know, the, the chair comes right oh, okay. out towards you, and the whole thing opens up. Get the dashboard to animate out the way. Oh, there's a few things that I really like about the interior of the dash. You've got this framework that, that runs all around the ship, so that when you're sat in that pilot seat, you feel like surrounded by this nest. Oh, you know, I love when it opens up, and you, know, you, that you is see cool. it out the first time you power the ship on. It took some iteration to get it get it right, but I kind of I do like it. Just the overall stance of the ship when it's in flight is a really nice feature of the Tavarian ships. For release, we knew we wouldn't have the full ejection pod mechanic, so we worked around this by adjusting the ejection seat parameters to support ejecting in any direction we wanted. So for the Talon at launch, it will have uh, ejection capabilities more than other ships. Ooh. So you will still be able to simulate that sort of last ditch forward eject. I want to do one final strike um, with my FPS weapons or melee or board onto a ship, fire it. Um, but you, you don't remain in the ejection pod. It comes with you for a point and then it carries on to get out of your way. Oh, okay, okay. The uh, I wish, the you know, I was, I was kind of hoping that um, we'll get the full ejection uh, concept that they initially pitched to us. But you know what? This works, man. Um, I kind of wish you'll still be in the pod and um, you can stay in it until somebody comes to pick you up. You know what I mean? That way you don't run out of you don't run out of oxygen. I was kind of hoping for that, but well, we'll take it. We'll take it as we get it, right? Due to Star Citizen, which is the iridescent shader, from the very start of the concept, we wanted to really push the visuals. Of this ship and our existing shaders really just didn't give that sort of bird, I really like the, 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 the shader for sure. shimmer to the shaders so 
we weren't sure if we were going to get it. Um, we reached out to the graphics team and they, they said it was something that you know they can push towards doing um, and, and they came in and they delivered it. I had some concerns over it would work for what we wanted for that initial paint job, but obviously we want to be able to support oh, that's a sexy. lot more variation. But luckily, once once Robin started experimenting with other paint jobs, the shader just works and it opens up a lot of possibilities Ooh. for it and other assets in the game. That is so cool. Man, I can I can imagine a whole fleet of talons. I mean, look at the way this this ship just flew by right now. To be able to support. Just look at this. Look how cool that is. But luckily, once once Robin started experimenting with the paint job, the shader just works. Look at that. It opens up a lot of possibilities for like a whole fleet of those just flying right by. That's scary. It's really important like for us that. to develop the Talon and the Talon Shrike because it not only increases the amount of ships that the Tavarian race has in the game, but it also gives players more that choice cool. than the light fighter group of ships. Not only that, that they actually provide a very visual difference, which for a lot of people is is a huge thing. The Talon and Talon Shrike are that is cool. to make that their is flight cool. ray debut in the upcoming Alpha 3.12, building on the popular light fighter experiences of the Gladius and Arrow with an added avian style and colorful flair. But before we let you go this week, let's go ahead and see if we can squeeze in one more sprint report before the holidays arrive. Let's get to it. We have a few updates in the world of FPS weapons, starting with this look at the new Bering FS9 light machine gun coming to the Persistent Universe in the upcoming Alpha 3.12. While the VFX artists are still, I look forward to, to trying this gun. Look oh, it looks pretty cool. By the time you see this one live, I like bearing bearing guns actually. The team is pushing for is a smaller but more realistic muzzle flash that's good for a spray and play player like myself. After all, if I'm lucky enough to hit anything when I shoot, it's nice when I can actually see it happen through the flash. At the other end of the spectrum is the Gemini A03 sniper rifle. That That's a sexy gun. Marksman as you can get. Now the I mean, look at the detail on this, smallest man. Smallest caliber rifle offered in Alpha 3.12. And feedback during review was that while it is intended to be small, we may still want to upscale the effect all the same. Like most things in game development, there's a delicate balancing act of adjustments. And I like how the barrel moves, actually. That seems just right. That's cool. Now looking at something a bit Whoa. Out, the weapons concept team recently completed a pass on the Shroud of the Avatar crossbow from manufacturer Ultiflex. Now this low IR, low EM stealth weapon has a very slick carbon fiberish look, and you can see how the cartridges load from underneath. Now these cartridges carry the smart ammo arrows that will expand the full length once they're pulled up and chambered above. Now, it remains Whoa, to be seen okay. what kind of physical damage and visual effect this will have on FPS gameplay. But you can bet that we're going to check in on this very unique weapon again before it makes that its way is into cool. the Persistent Universe. That is Let's so cool. Ships. Okay. First up, we've got a look at perennial test bed, the Aegis Gladius, now getting its component pass where they add things like the coolers and the jump drives and whatnot. Oh. It's important items that not only have to be accessible for players in the Persistent Universe, but also completely usable by the AI deck crews within Squadron 42. We also have a real quick look at fan favorite, the Aegis Redeemer, as it continues early progress through white box phase. Now using a modular system similar to the Vanguard series, we can already see things like the living areas and remote turret stations starting to come into their own. But the biggest ship news perhaps is that we've got a very work in progress look at the SDF shield tech currently in development. What you're that seeing is cool. here is a test mock-up with temporary damage values and intermediate colors used for demonstration purposes only. Now, shields on larger ships are intended to be fairly powerful, so there was a concern during development about how players would actually know they were doing any damage at all. This led to an idea seen here, where we're testing an easily readable that is so cool. Look at that. players could be causing to the shields across these larger ships. This this is going to make a huge impact when it comes to combat because 
when it when it comes to combat the key things that are important is sound and the visuals right and um right now i think we don't get to see it too much um when we hit other people um when we hit other people's shields but the way they mock this up it's so satisfying knowing that you're hitting this ship and you can see the the, the bullets penetrating the shields and actually making physical damage causing um fire right and uh it's very very impressive i like that the javelin used here for demonstration purposes just because it's really big it's important to state once more okay. that everything you're seeing here is work in progress and done for testing purposes the colors and the damage modifiers and the time to trigger the changing effects will all be tuned in further passes i mean look at this pistol that's not a normal pistol give me that pistol Alternate tests also include using different patterns for distributing the damage effect across these new SDF shields, like this hexagon pattern. It looks like the javelin is like almost ready to, to be flight ready. The fact that they're As testing it like this. Patterns, which colors and which tunings will be used when SDF I suspect it will be, they'll, they'll put well, it in the verse, probably the next couple of patches. In environment news, the team is finishing up a series of daily passes updating many of the aspects found across Stan's planets and moons ahead of the upcoming Alpha 3.12. Now these polishes are part of an ongoing effort that started earlier this year to bring these existing Oh, okay, that's in that's new. This is new. That's cool. That's really cool. I like that. Line with new technologies as they've been developed. Things like the new organic shader, the height map improvements, updated ground textures using scanned elements, a newly robust geology library, and more. Wow, wow, that is so beautiful. I need this shot. That is so pretty. Where is that Hurston? It looks like Hurston. The planet team has been working on developing Ooh. ocean buoyancy on a per entity basis and generating the rule sets for creating procedurally placed items, derelicts, and more out across oh. the ocean's surface. Now, that is so cool. Exciting possibilities here, including so they're planning on putting derelicts on the ocean so are they planning on giving us vehicles such as submarines and things like that just in case like let's say if it's yeah it's on the ocean but what if you want to go under what if there's more of the derelict under the water right i wonder if they're going to give us some level some type of vehicle to go there and discover or something that maybe like um a flight suit that can help you go underwater and provide more oxygen than normal. Maybe, I don't know. Including uh, advanced traversal for the recovery of resources or mission items, submerged okay. exploration, and more. Oh, okay, Obviously, okay, the so they work do. you're seeing here is very work in progress, as this is a test of tech and not visuals. But it is an exciting look at the ongoing explorations, exploring what's possible. That's cool. Also, Here's here's Henry on a duck <laughs> going going up and down. Sometimes you got to take the bad with the good. We've also got this look at the current progress of touch bending, which will be used to provide a more realistic experience when traveling through areas like the Hearst and Savannah. Oh, the team that's has cool. made some good progress since we last showed their efforts, but some of the ways they still want to improve on what you're seeing here is to get a bend that's not quite the one thing one thing that i like about cig and star citizen is the fact that they, they they um they are working on every little detail right just adding this little tech where when you walk through the grass it bends um just makes all the difference right when you're when the game is fully developed and you're actually out there exploring when it comes to the elements when it comes to um pre pre preparing for your your journey and things like that and to be able to walk through grass and the grass reacts to you as well like all of it 
adds to a, um, a richer experience. And I'm very, very impressed that they're working on all the little details that will add to the whole um, experience that they're trying to deliver through this game. This is why this game is so popular is because uh, they're, they're not holding back when it comes to um, making this the best game ever. You know what I mean? So it's very, very good. A complete crumple demonstrated here while also getting a much slower return to upright so that it's then possible to visually track players or creatures through the tall grass. Beyond okay. these challenges, the team also needs to develop an effective way to apply the various level of detail versions necessary for a massively multiplayer game of our scale. It's one thing to get this looking good up close, but it still has to work for those far away, and the team is looking forward to tackling that challenge in the new year. Finally, if you've been watching ISC Weekly, you've seen that we've been following along with the continuing evolution of our colonial homesteads intended to oh, be found man. throughout the persistent universe. And in our last sprint report of the year, let's go ahead and take a look at just one of the earliest internal white box layouts for a communal module. Now, is this a bar, a hab, a kitchen, an activities hall? We don't know yet. That's part of the fun of game development. Because these homesteads are meant for the far-reaching frontier areas of something like Pyro, the team is exploring things like storm shutters to protect from the elements outside, oh, that's as cool. well as vertical traversal options to allow players to get wherever they need to go for a variety of gameplay opportunities. And overall, these homesteads are still in an exploration phase and haven't fully entered production just yet. But homesteads like these are just chock full of potential in what they can add to the overall Star Citizen experience. So what did we learn this week? Man, that is so interesting with, with the homesteads. I'm very excited to uh, to see the very first iteration of it. The fact that we'll have the ability to actually build our own bases and to to have your ship landed right next to your, your home base and to be able to traverse between um, your home base and to your ship and to for, for your home base to be able to manage... Um, power um maybe food to make sure that there's 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 enough resources to sustain your homestead and and things of that nature is very very exciting i'm very interested to see more about this actually i think it'll add so much more to the game the game will be a lot more fun to be able to have your own bases and the potential of building towns with with your with your crew and things like that it's very very exciting and i'm actually very excited about the um the talon itself man i really want to see it man i actually own it so um that's one of the things i'm really excited about to see in 3.12 hopefully it comes out very soon um yeah so if you're new to this channel subscribe if you haven't already and if there's anything in this video you like uh, leave a like as well all right if there's any comments leave it in the comments below all right i will see you on the next one